One of my favorite parts about investing is, of course, the constant opportunity to learn about new subjects. And some of the most important subjects, of course, are business topics and investing topics. So in this video, I wanted to cover some of the best investing and business books that I read this year. First of all, going forward in 2022, that's gonna be one of my bigger goals is to read more books. But I do have a stack of a few books that I read this year that I'd love to share with you all. Many of these book recommendations came from you all out there watching these videos. So I really appreciate all of those recommendations. Uh, please keep them coming. Uh, I love hearing about what you all are reading. And of course, there will be links to all these books in the video description below if you're interested in picking any of these up for yourself. It is after all the holiday season and there's no better gift to yourself or to others than a new book. All right, let's hop over to my top investing in business books of 2021. Okay, I'll start off with my absolute favorite book of this year, and that is Richer, Wiser, Happier, written by William Green. This book actually came out at the perfect time for me because... I felt like each chapter deserved its own video explaining it in full. I've only actually done two videos on that, but some of my greatest learning this year came directly from this book. In this book, you can find some of the great mental models, the habits and the practices of some of the world's best investors. Along with that, you'll have a lot of biographical information about investors such as Monish Pabrai, Howard Marks, and Sir John Templeton. So if you're looking for a book that's gonna teach you how to run a discounted cash flow or calculate the intrinsic value of a business, then this book will provide the tools to think about concepts like that, but it will not actually provide any technical instruction. But a lot of the concepts in this book actually make thinking about those ideas a lot easier. For me, the number one chapter has got to be the one about Nick Sleep and Case Zakaria. Their story of nomad partnership is something that I was not familiar with before I read this book. In this book, you'll find guidance for thinking long-term and finding great companies and being extremely patient. And I've probably dog-eared this book more than most of the books that I've read in my life. For instance, there's this page called Five Lessons with a Long Shelf Life that comes directly from the Case and Zakaria chapter. Um, that page alone is probably worth more than the entire book, maybe worth more than this whole stack of books combined. So if there's one book that I would recommend to investors and even non-investors alike, it would be this one. William Green has had a long career interacting with a bunch of these famous investors, and some of them unfortunately are no longer around with us, but for instance, Sir John Templeton, he has exclusive interviews that he gave years ago uh, he has exclusive interviews going back decades with investors like Bill Miller. So if you not only want to live a better life, but also have a better investing mindset, then this book is a must read. Okay, moving on to another great book that I read this year was called Alibaba, The House That Jack Ma Built. Now, this book sort of started it all for me when it comes to thinking about investing in Alibaba, because before reading this book and uh, you know, seeing Charlie Munger had invested in Alibaba. I had never really studied the business of Alibaba. I mean, I was familiar with the name, but I just assumed that it was some Amazon clone coming, coming up in China as opposed to the United States. But this book, although it is a few years old at this point, does a wonderful job of explaining some of the core businesses, especially the e-commerce business within Alibaba. Because it is old, it misses out on some of the bigger opportunities going forward for Baba, including the cloud computing business. But um, it really deepened my understanding of both the foundational culture, uh, Jack Ma's tenacity, and the e-commerce business in general, within not just within Alibaba, but for the whole landscape in China. And while it does tell the backstory of Jack Ma's foray into business, it also talks about how Alibaba competed with some American giants that came into China, such as Yahoo and eBay, and how Jack Ma and Alibaba eventually beat those newcomers. So it's a really interesting look into the early landscape of China's e-commerce businesses and a great way to just understand Alibaba a little bit better. Next up, we have a short but very impactful book called Ask Iwata. This is a compilation of all of the writings that Satoru Iwata has given throughout his career as the former CEO of Nintendo. Sadly, he passed away in 2015, but he oversaw such behemoth consoles such as the Nintendo Wii and the Nintendo DS, which were completely revolutionary and 
much beloved by the fan base. I have an interest in Nintendo, not only from an investment perspective, but as a fan of the company. It's a company that I want to be an investor of, and I know that I'm gonna be a lifelong participant with their products. By reading this book, hopefully you'll understand some of the biographical information about Iwata, which is interesting in and of itself. His development from being an actual game developer to being an executive with Nintendo. Additionally, you'll learn about how he tried to run his business, how he interacted with the employees in his hire, and how he helped shape Nintendo to actually build their games, um, building software that is led by hardware design. There are a lot of little nuggets of wisdom in here. Um, hopefully you'll get some insights about Nintendo, get some insights about management, and I'll leave this review of this book with the quote on the back. The back of the book reads, on my business card, I am a corporate president. In my mind, I am a game developer, but in my heart, I am a gamer. Definitely a good book. This book was recommended to me by a viewer on this channel, and it is called The Five Rules for Successful Stock Investing by none other than the legendary Pat Dorsey. Now, Pat Dorsey has been one of these investors that I've really come to love this year. Uh, his long-term orientation of finding high quality companies at reasonable prices is really attractive to me. So Dorsey is somebody that I've been studying a lot. So of course I had to pick up one of his books. So he wrote this when he was still the director of stock analysis at Morningstar. And since then he has opened up his own fund, Dorsey Asset Management. But where do I even start with this book? I mean, it's got so much packed into it. Uh, and it does look big, but it's worth reading every single page. The beginning of the book covers his thoughts on how to find business moats, which is basically a fancy way of saying what kind of competitive advantage does a business have and how durable is that competitive advantage. Finding durable moats is basically Dorsey's claim to fame, but in this book, he also gives a great introduction to, well, not it's not even an introduction. It's a wonderful guide to understanding financial statements. He walks through examples of reading income statements, the balance sheet, and the statement of cash flows. It's really great stuff. And Dorsey is such a clear writer that it's really easy to follow this, even if you're brand new to investing. And in fact, I would recommend this book as one of the first few technical investing books that you would read to get started learning how to invest for yourself. Dorsey even covers how to calculate intrinsic value of companies based on the discounted value of its future free cash flows. He also goes through an example of how he would invest in a few stocks from top to bottom, the entire process. Now, it might be a little bit dumbed down compared to what he actually does, but you get a real sense of what it looks like to think about a stock all the way from the financial statements, through a moat, all the way to valuation. And he didn't need to go this far, but at the end he provided an extra bit of value where he goes over probably 10 different sectors, maybe 15 different sectors, such as you know software companies, uh, utility companies, banks, and he goes through with other Morningstar analysts who cover those areas specifically, and basically tells you how to think about the valuation for these different types of sectors. So if you don't know anything about banks, read the chapter where he tells you what makes a good bank profitable and what makes a good bank a good investment. It's great stuff. Dorsey's the man, definitely check this book out, highly recommend it. And I've actually got another Pat Dorsey book. Uh, this one is a little bit more digestible, but it is just as important because while the five rules for successful stock investing covers a bunch of different concepts, um, some more pertinent to actually thinking about investing in, in companies from a valuation or a financial statement perspective, perspective. This book covers solely moats. Now, in my opinion, the moat is the reason why financial statements look good. So if the company doesn't have a moat or you can't understand the moat of the company, then looking at the numbers might not make a whole lot of sense to you, might not help you understand the business at all. Monish Prabhai in a talk has said that one of his investments in Rain Industries, he could see in the numbers that the company had a competitive advantage, but he couldn't tell what the actual advantage was. It just was evident in the numbers. So hopefully this book will help you elucidate some of those situations. Um, you might see a company with a really high return on equity, for example. Uh, this book will help you identify 
why that might be the case for the company. The reason why moats are so important is that they really help you form a picture of the present and what the potential future for that business is, depending on how durable their advantage is. So this is a book you could probably read within the day. It's called The Little Book That Builds Wealth. So in this book, he covers in depth the four different types of moats that he has identified in businesses in general. Those moats are intangible assets, switching costs, network effects, and cost advantages for businesses. So if you wanna get a better understanding of those concepts, I would highly recommend this book. There isn't a ton of information on actually valuing these companies beyond a few uh, ratios. So I would definitely recommend the five rules for successful stock investing if you're interested in that concept as well. But again, Dorsey writes this for any audience. So if you're trying to convince a family member maybe that uh, investing in companies for the long term is the best approach, then maybe this is a good book recommendation for them. So if you're an investor focusing on wonderful businesses at reasonable prices that are gonna grow for a long time, then you need to read this book. If you haven't noticed, a lot of these books are little, but uh, little books pack a powerful punch. And this is called The Acquirer's Multiple by Tobias Carlyle. And boy, is this an important book. This is another book you could probably read in a day, uh, but you'll get a year's worth of information out of this book. The main thrust of this book is understanding investing in deep value companies. He actually does a study comparing the long-term compounder approach that is uh, proselytized by Charlie Munger and Warren Buffett, but he compares that to investing in deep value companies, um, things that can be cheap quantitatively and statistically, and finds that that approach, the quantitative approach, is actually outperforming in the long run. Another key takeaway is the namesake of the book, which is the acquirer's multiple. I'll read this here. The acquirer's multiple is the enterprise value divided by operating earnings. Think of the enterprise value as the price you pay and operating earnings as the value you get. The lower the acquirer's multiple, the more value you get for the price you pay and the better the stock. So basically the acquirer's multiple gives you a ratio or a quantitative way to compare companies based on the attractiveness of their price. And the general idea is that the lower requires multiple, the better the price. This book is also great from a biographical standpoint because he covers the early years of the Buffett partnership and he covers other investors like Carl Icahn and Daniel Loeb. And in all three cases, they use this deep value approach with the acquirers multiple to make huge gains in the market. So again, this is a short one, but you absolutely have to read this if you're interested in investing. All right, this book is called The Minimalist Entrepreneur. And this is written by Sahil Lavingia, the founder of Gumroad. Gumroad is a website that allows creators to post content and get paid for that content. So if you've written an ebook, Gumroad is a great place to distribute that to anybody who wants to buy. Because you post a simple link, they click it, go through with the payment, and the product gets sent to them. It's a really good idea, and I wish I had thought of it. I would absolutely recommend this book to anybody who is considering starting their own business or if you're in the middle of that journey yourself. But this isn't just any book because the main point of being a minimalist entrepreneur is that your number one goal is to be sustainable and profitable at the earliest stage that you can. We're not here to raise millions of dollars from VCs. We want to bootstrap ourselves and run this business in a sustainable way. I think this is a much more realistic and achievable approach for 99% of the businesses out there. In the first chapter, he lays out the ground rules for what it means to be a minimalist entrepreneur. And I'll just give you a few of them here. Um, number one is profitability. First, you start with community, you build as little as possible, sell to your first hundred customers, and the list goes on and on. But basically the goal here is to build a business that is sustainable, and is one that you would want to run for possibly the rest of your life. Sahil offers some wonderful ideas of how to think of business ideas, how to generate um, arbitrage opportunities for where there is uh, a missing service in a market that you think that you could provide. And of course, there's always that age old recommendation of building something to solve your own problem. So this book has been really great for me, especially the beginning parts of the book, because that's more about uh, generating business ideas. I'm still interested in the concepts of building your minimum viable product or what I think he calls the manual viable product, which is you don't even need to build code necessarily if you're if you're approaching this from a SaaS product perspective. Um, 
you can do things manually and start a business that way. Sahil has a lot of credibility because he has been kind of through it all, especially with Gumroad. Um, he, was, he was actually working as an engineer at, at Pinterest. Um, he had hopes of being the next unicorn with Gumroad, and he ended up transitioning because of some failure to being a minimalist entrepreneur. And this has actually been a better route for him. So if building a sustainable business and trying to help you with a business plan is something that piques your interest, then I would highly recommend this book as one of the best books that I read this year. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that rundown of some of the best investing and business books that I read in 2021. I had a great time going through all of these books. Uh, next year, I will make it a point to go through even more of them. Again, there are links to any of these books in the video description below. If you enjoyed this video, you might wanna check out this video over here. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching this all the way to the end. Please like the video and subscribe for more. I thank you so much for your time and I will see you in the next video.